for my first poem, I would like to read you a poem in memory of Adam Zagajewski, the great Polish poet who died not long ago. In memory of Adam Zagajewski. On this first day after your death, I read your books. In one afternoon and an evening, you change from a hopeful young man to a person older. Of all you had hoped for, much did arrive. A new era opened, however briefly, its windows. You loved and were loved. Your poems were successful. They became themselves fully, also more sad. The love of birds, animals, insects, cities stayed for a lifetime. To them you compared many things. The wind yawned for you once, like a foxhound. Dusk spoke in Sanskrit. You noted calmly the earth's indifference, then noted its chestnut trees' openings, summonings, calls. You lived in three countries, carried three countries' passports. Time stamped onto their pages its visas' ornate colored inks, grief, history, love, meals, conversations, haircuts. Is it now so quickly for you as you once imagined for poets already dead? Their doubts vanished with them, you wrote. Their rapture lives. This poem comes from the world before pandemic when poetry festival events would take me to readings all over the world. And I can't know if that way of doing things will ever arrive again. Uh, but I would especially like to thank this International Poetry Festival for inviting me to take part in uh, this year's celebration of UNIAC's 60th anniversary. At a great honor to be here with you all. In a former coal mine in Silesia. In a former coal mine in Silesia, a thousand feet inside the earth, a tongue kept speaking. In the Arctic, by the triangular door to the Svalbard seed vault, a tongue almost fearless, almost not clumsy, spoke spoke verbs, conjunctions, adjectives, adverbs, nouns. In a small town in the Australian outback, in the city of Nanjing, near a gate still recalling unthinkable closures, by a lake in Montana, a tongue almost steady, almost not stumbling, spoke facts, hypotheses, memories, riddles, stories. Lungs accept their oxygen without trembling. Feet stand inside their foot shapes, inside shoes someone has sewn. We close the eyes of the dead so they will not see they're not seeing. Light falls on the retinas stubbornness, on pupils refusing to turn toward or away. Fireflies, furnaces, quicksilvers fill them, cities and forests glinting, though already finished. And the tongues, the faithless tongues, continue speaking, as lovers will, because they still love. Long past the hour, there is nothing left to say. Vest. I put on again the vest of many pockets. It is easy to forget which holds the reading glasses, which the small pen, which the house keys, the compass and whistle, the passport. To forget at last for weeks, even the pocket holding the day of digging a place for my sister's ashes. The one holding the day where someone will soon enough put my own to misplace the pocket of touching the walls at Auschwitz would seem impossible. It is not. To misplace for a decade the
the pocket of tears. I rummage and rummage, transfers from Munich, from Melbourne to Oslo, a receipt for a Singapore copy, a device holding music, Bach, Garcia, Richter, Porter, Pert. A woman, long dead now, gave me when I told her I could not sing a kazoo, now in a pocket. Somewhere a pocket holding a Steinway, somewhere a pocket holding a packet of salt. Borgesian vest, Oxford English Dictionary vest with a magnifying glass tucked inside one snapped closed pocket, Wikipedia vest, Rosetta vest, Enigma vest of decoding. How is it one person can carry your weight for a lifetime? One person slip into your open arms for a lifetime. Who was given the world and hunted for tissues for chapstick. A day is vast. A day is vast until noon, then it's over. Yesterday's pond water braided still wet in my hair. I don't know what time is. You can't ever find it, but you can lose it. And this last poem can be understood as being about the muse, but when I wrote it, I had more in mind the many poets whose work is truly great and yet they might have, have no opportunity to publish, they might not be translated into a language I will ever be able to read. And so I would like to dedicate this reading to those unknown poets and their work and to the poems that change the world, whether or not we know they exist. The poet. She is working now in a room not unlike this one, the one where I write or you read. Her table is covered with paper. The light of the lamp would be tempered by a shade where the bulb's single harshness might dissolve, but it is not. She has taken it off. Her poems, I will never know them, though they are the ones I most need. Even the alphabet she writes in I cannot decipher. Her chair, let us imagine whether it is leather or canvas, vinyl or wicker. Let her have a chair, her shadeless lamp, the table. Let one or two she loves be in the next room. Let the door be closed, the sleeping ones healthy. Let her have time and silence, enough paper to make mistakes and go on. Thank you very much. Thank you.